By Shem Yahushab, by Shem Rakakadash. As all praise and glory to the Most High and His only begotten Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Brother Abraham, Roy Rajima Yahusha. And uh, today's, you see the title of the lesson. We titled this one, That Man of Sin is Being Revealed. Okay, the man of sin is being revealed. Okay, and uh, we're going to open up with uh, a couple of videos right off the bat. One moment. Oh, I just realized. I can't see anything. I just realized it was speaking. We saw you guys earlier. Oh, One moment. Uh, You bear with me one moment. I'm trying to pull up this video. Israel had an intent against the Palestinians in Gaza. 
That is evident from the way in which Israel's military attack is being conducted. Israel's special genocidal intent is rooted in the belief that in fact the enemy is not just the military wing of Hamas or indeed Hamas generally, but is embedded in the fabric of Palestinian life in Gaza. The Heritage Minister Amichai Eliyahu said that Israel must find ways for Gazans that are more painful than death. The intent to destroy Gaza has been nurtured at the highest levels of state. Turning to the third genocidal act under Article 2C, Israel has deliberately imposed conditions on Gaza that cannot sustain life and are calculated to bring about its physical destruction. Every day, there is mounting irreparable loss of life, property, dignity, and humanity for the Palestinian people. Our news feeds show graphic images of suffering that has become unbearable to watch. Nothing will stop the suffering except an order from this court. Without an indication of provisional measures, the atrocities will continue, with the Israeli Defense Force indicating that it intends pursuing this course of action for at least a year. Israel has a genocidal in. All right, now these are the world courts that's being mainly concerning Israel, the Jewish state of Israel, okay, and uh, NATO in general, Pacifica with Israel, Israel being accused of uh, genocidal war crimes, right? Okay, going against, and who is the biggest ally to uh, Israel will be America, okay? America is Israel's military, okay? And they're being accused of basically genocide, breaking war rules, okay? They have a seat on the United Nations, okay? The United Nations is supposed to vote, okay? America is the top dog, bypasses all of this, such as this current war that's going on now. They like, okay, we'll ceasefire, okay? America, Israel, like, no. So America's basically their vote is not even, it's not a vote like it's supposed to be. Their word overrides the rest of everybody else that's on that council. So these are these nations having these international world meetings against Basically, the Western uh, power, America. Okay, and I'm gonna play a second video. All this tied together. Well, thanks very much for joining us at such short notice. It's obviously a very fluid situation in the Middle East at the moment. Um, now, the Houthis, they've been targeting civilian cargo vessels now for months. I guess it was only a matter of time until the, uh, the Western forces stepped up and hit back. Well, uh, they may have stepped up and hit back, but this is a fight that they will inevitably lose uh, based on the morale and the, the, the willpower and the uh, amount of nations and people that are choosing sides. And, and uh, the Yemenis have been the heroic leaders and the people that have risen up and actually put muscle to where their mouth is. Turkey hasn't. Um, uh, Egypt and uh, Jordan and, and all these other countries have not. But the Houthis have. They've riv risen up and they've simply said, stop the genocide of the Palestinian people. Stop murdering women and children. Stop blowing up every inch of Gaza. Uh, and we'll let ships pass by. If you don't stop uh, committing genocide, we won't let a single ship that is bound for Israel or trades with Israel or exports or imports anything to or from Israel uh, float. We'll sink everything we can. And I think that is a, a noble and necessary uh, tit for tat. I think that when you come right down to it, this is the nature of war. And uh, the West doesn't particularly like their hegemony being challenged. They don't like that uh, these uh, little ba bands of tribesmen that the West and the British thought had been uh, effectively neutralized during the Saudi war. Uh, they've actually risen up uh, as, a, as a mighty guerrilla force. 
So I think as the West opens up this front and engages in bombing strikes and uh, other things, you will indeed see Hezbollah strike. You will see Hamas strike. You will see Syria strike. You will see Iraqi militias strike. You will see bases in Syria, bases in Iraq, bases in Qatar, all coming under increasing guerrilla attacks. You will see U.S. Uh, and British ships sunk to the bottom of the Gaza uh, or the Mediterranean Sea, as well as the Red Sea. I, I have no doubt about it because the West is suicidal in its its strategy. It thinks that if it shows enough firepower, the rest of the world is going to back down. Well, this is not 2003. This is a world that is learned after 2003 that you either stand up to a ferocious, cannibalistic, maniac bully, or you're devoured by that bully, as we've seen in Afghanistan, Iraq, and uh, Libya. So the world has learned the lesson that the West cannot be trusted and is nothing to admire. Meyer, and it's recently seen this again with the Israeli uh, genocide that it has launched against the people of Gaza. And I think the world is rising up to stand against it. And one final note, too, it's interesting to note that Ro Khanna, the American congressman, has cited that this is indeed illegal for the West America specifically to do a military strike. Why? Because let's remember the House of Representatives passed a resolution that the United States would not engage in war, uh, war activities or attacks against Iran or anywhere else in the, in the Houthi Middle East uh, uh, region. They passed that resolution to stop Donald Trump from taking action against Iran, but that resolution still stands. And uh, to say that it's okay for Joe Biden to engage in this uh, unlawful act of war uh, without going through the Congress is complete hypocrisy. There, there are, su there are suggestions that, that Congress was briefed, according to a senior, uh, senior excuse me. I'm okay, so you can see the two main things that he said, okay, that that's supposed to, that was a vote already put in place, okay, that they can't just go to a war and start bombing like that, okay, but what did Biden do, okay, this whole situation with Yemen and Gaza and that bombing, he went around and bypassed all that, so this is going to what I was saying in the beginning, okay, these uh, world councils are coming together now saying, look, they're breaking all uh, all the laws as for this uh, uh, war crimes and going against what's on the books. OK, he didn't go through the uh, Congress for that. He just automatically what just acting based off of what own free will, off their own intents. So this is showing what the rest of the world is starting to rise up. OK, against the West, particularly America. OK, so through this whole uh, uh, war thing that's starting to form, you got the whole world. OK, who's starting to side against America and Israel. Okay. And this is leading up to what the Bible talks about. Okay. That, that great and final battle, the, the, the battle that's leading to the uh, battle that's going to take place in Joel, the third chapter of Jehoshaphat. Okay. That, that, that great judgment while the Lord is getting all nations together and gathering them down to lead them into that great area for the great and last battle. This is what this is all leading to. All right. But what is it also showing? You heard something he said. He said the rest of these nations ain't bowing down to the bully no more for years. OK, America's been the superpower of the West. OK, whatever they want goes. OK, bully ball. You don't want to play right. What uh, some type of war proxy war would uh, come against whatever nation. OK, going back where there was what uh, with Gaddafi. OK, uh, South Africa, you, you got any. Uh, you pretty much look at history. Anybody who stood on their own and go against the agenda, what the West do, what it was always war waged against them. But now what he say, this is not 2003. The rest of the world have those same nuclear weapons. See, and that's for the first time the world is standing up. OK, and in and, and the process of this standing up, it's starting to narrow down. OK, who is the man to sin? Who is the culprit? Who's the devil behind all of this to begin with? OK, these world wars, these proxy wars. OK, who 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 has this all coming from in the midst of a world saying cease fire, cease fire? Who are the ones just keeping this thing going? Let's keep, light, you know, lighting the, the, the fire to this fuse. All right. So let's open up. Um. Uh, I want to get Opadaya, Opadaya 1 and 6. We'll go to the scriptures. Hallelujah. 
how are the things of Esau searched out? How are they, how are the hidden things sought out? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. See that when they say the men that were at peace with thee, this is what we're starting to witness. Okay. All those other countries on the UN table and things of that nature were supposed to be allies. Okay. This is starting what a big separation. It's, it's causing them to come against America because well, what does war lead to? Like we saw in the video. Okay. Uh, all of those uh, shipments and things that, 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 that they rely on to different countries, those exports that has to go through that Gaza Strip to pass by on ship or whatever, that's cutting all that off. A lot of those things are goods are just lying dormant in the middle of the sea. So this is affecting what? Other nations' economy. Okay, and they're looking at it like, okay, all of this is America, Israel's fault. See, so that's what it says. Um, all of the men, verse seven, all of the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevail against thee. They that eat thy bread has laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. All right. Also, I want to go to uh, Habakkuk, Habakkuk 1 and 6. Two and six, that's what I want. This is Habakkuk 2 and 6. Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a tunning proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth in that which is not his. How long? And to him that laid it himself with thick clay, shall, not, shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and awake that shall vex thee? And thou shalt be for booties unto them, because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the na because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of thy people shall spoil thee, because of men's blood, for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. So let's look at what it says, verse 8. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all of the remnant of thy people shall spoil thee. So that's what's starting to happen now. This The whole world, all these other countries, now that they finally got their weight up, talking about their military, uh, a lot of these other countries got nuclear weapons and things of that nature. Now they puffing their chest back out at America. OK, now they, they standing up to the bully for the first time. So it's saying all that you have spoiled, basically, they're getting ready to spoil you now. All right. Let's get. Um, let me see. Isaiah 33 and 1. Woe unto thee. Let me see something. All right, so like I had to close out that app. Keep messing up. This is uh, uh, Isaiah 33 and 1. Woe unto thee that spoilest, and thou was not spoiled, and dealest treacherously. And they dwelt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. See that? And when thou shalt make it in to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. Talking about these other nations. A lot of these uh, nations can't wait for the West to fall off. See, now that the, the economy is weaker than ever, the military is weaker than ever. All of these other nations are looking at it like, OK, we see the light now. OK, we can enforce our own policies. Right. We can uh, uh, thrive off our own currency economies. See, so a lot of these nations are not going to come to America's aid or Israel's aid when it really, really go down. OK, this is what we're slowly starting to witness. Also, let's get. Um, let me let me go back to Habakkuk. It was something else in Habakkuk. One, I want it. Uh, let me see. Mm. Let me go here and get Jeremiah then in front of This is Jeremiah 49 and 10. Uh, 
but I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoil and his brethren and his neighbors. And he is not. See that when it say I've made Esau bear. OK, that's what that's going into it. OK, the world is starting to finally see who, who the culprit is, who's been behind. OK, a lot of these uh major wars when they come to land, okay, money, gold, all things of that nature. Okay. Who's always the common denominator that seems to be there. Okay. So this is what the world is starting to finally narrow down and see. Okay. We're going to, um, let me see, let me get, what's another one. Let me go ahead to Joel, Joel three. Behold, in the day, in those days, and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will plead with them, therefore, my people and my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Okay, so this is what this is all leading up to. Okay, that great final ba uh, battle, like I was saying earlier, which going down to the Valley of, Jeho uh, Valley of Jehoshaphat. This is why if you look now, okay, the, uh, what is it? The uh, Euphrates River is being dried up. Okay, well, that's prophecy that that talks about. Okay, it's being dried up. What? So these armies, the armies of the East can make their way down there. This is everything that's starting to take place. OK, so the Lord's prophecy is starting to be fulfilled uh, before our eyes. OK, let me go and grab this scripture real quick. Uh, let me see. One moment. Okay, I'm going to read this again and we'll go to 2nd Ezra 15. <clears throat> Joel 3 and 2, and I will also gather all nations and I will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel that they have scattered among the nations and parted my land because ultimately the Lord is doing this also to what? Judge all these nations that had took place in what? Israel's captivity. At one point in time throughout our history, okay, our nation has been in subject or bondage to all of these different nations around the earth. Okay, so this is also the Lord using these nations to judge one another. All right, this is uh, 2 Ezra 15 and 20. Behold, said Yahweh, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, from Lebanon, to turn them one against another and repay the things that they have done to them, like as they do yet this day unto my chosen. So I also, so will I do also and recompense their bosom. Thus says the Lord God. Okay, so see, this is showing you part of the reason why the Lord is also doing it. He's going to judge these other nations. But in the process of all this going on, what is really happening? That man is seeing Esau, the world is starting to see, okay, who the real culprit is, who this man is seeing is, who's behind all this havoc and chaos. All right, um, another priest, uh, we're going to Nahum 3 and 3. Uh, verse five is when I'm going to start. Behold, I am against thee, said the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts up on thy face and I will show the nations thy nakedness and the kingdoms thy shame. And I will cast abominable filth up on thee and make 
the vow and will sit down as a gazing stock. See that? So that's going into the Lord finally exposing them. Okay. The whole world is starting to witness and see. Okay. That's why if you look right now, these other nations, you look even the average person. Okay. This is the hour of truth. Okay. The Lord is uh, waking people up. Their spirit of truth is in the earth. Okay. People are really starting to see. Okay. What is really going on? They're starting to learn the history. Okay, this Jewish state created in 1948, Israel, and they're starting to really see who's the, the uh, people behind the scenes that's pulling all the strings. See, also, um, let's get Isaiah 14 and 4. Isaiah 14 and 4. Isaiah 14 and 4. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how hath the oppressor ceased to go the city cease? The Lord had broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. He that ruled the nations in his anger. He persecuted and none hindered. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. All right, let me jump down to uh, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did as weak as the nations? Okay, how did they weaken the nations? Talking about America through what all its sanctions, the different sanctions and policies they put on these foreign uh, countries who don't want to go along or cooperate or play ball according to what their agenda, right? So this is what this is showing you. Uh, verse 12 again, how are they falling? Already read. Let me read verse 13. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also up on the mount of the congregation and the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look up on thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake the kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, and that opened not the house of their prisons? You see that? This is what the rest of the world is starting to say now. Okay, so are these the people that's been behind this the whole time? These are the people. OK, there's been putting sanctions and always have involving or going over, sitting up a, a military based cathedral, always trying to regulate something in another land. OK, so the world is starting to finally see this at, at one time is what he's saying. Let's get a uh, second Ezra six and 18 now. And I will begin to make inquisition of them what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. And when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled and when the world shall begin to vanish away, shall be finished. Then will I show these tokens. The book shall be open before the firmament and they shall see all together. See, so the whole world is starting to witness and see these things all together. See, this is why so much truth in general coming out. OK, but a lot of it is distractions. What like you, you take, for example, a lot of this celebrity gossip and news that's coming out. That's to really what kind of distract you from what the real man is seeing. OK, those small those people that's over there in the land that's really pulling the strings, that's controlling things. See, so don't get too caught up in the distractions. That's like a, a old trick, redirect or redirecting. Look over here while the hidden hand is uh, really operating. But now this is prophecy being fulfilled. Everybody is starting to see even through the distractions now. OK, people really, really starting to see. OK, these are the people, right? That's behind all this corruption the whole time. OK, the people of the print, the people of Satan himself. All right. Um, let me go ahead and grab that. Second uh, Thessalonians two and three. This is the uh, main, this is why we get our title, the title of the lesson from that man of sin being revealed. All right. Um, all right. Uh, Second Thessalonians uh, two and three. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except that be a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. 
Okay, so that man of sin is starting to be revealed now. When they talk about the man of sin, it's talking about a people. Okay, not one as many other precepts like okay, it uh plantation Christianity they uh, taught us that's talking about one particular man or antichrist that's gonna pop up. Okay, well. Paul told you in the Bible, okay, even now the spirit of Antichrist working. Other scriptures tell you there are many Antichrists. So it ain't talking about one man. That's talking about a people that the world is starting to finally see for the first time. Okay, see how truth is coming out. Even that uh that tunnel they found or whatever. Well, that, and under that synagogue, okay, that would look at everything that was hidden in that tunnel. Okay, all kind of corruption, bloody mattresses, baby chairs, car seats, all kind of what the hell they doing down there. So that's just one example when it talks about the Lord making Esau bear, exposing him. Okay, that, that, that sin is being seen in the last days. Okay, that's the man of sin being revealed. All right, um, let's get some more precepts. Uh, what else? Let's see. Let's get. Um, let me grab this real quick. Uh, Luke eight seventeen. This is literally what's happening. Everything that was in the dark, the Lord is starting to bring to the light now. For nothing that is secret shall not. For nothing in, is secret that shall not be manifest. Neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Okay, St. Luke 12 and 2. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. See, so everything that was once covered, the Lord is all bringing to the light, including who this man is seeing is. All right, uh, Proverbs 26 and 26. Whose hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation. All right. So the whole congregation, same thing we read in uh, 2 Ezra 6, 18, 19. OK, the, the whole world shall see it together. See, this is what's happening. See, the Internet and, and one of those top elite uh, bankers, it might have been Rothschild or uh the Rockefellers, one of them made a statement when it came to the Internet. They say the Internet shouldn't have never been invented. See, but now we see how the Lord is about balance What the most high is doing now. They thought the Internet was only going to be used what to continue to keep our people sleep. Like when you go on there, it ain't nothing to find, you know, some uh, uh, sister twerking, some Negro talking about some fool. There's any type of ignorance. See. But see, in the last days, the Lord poured. He said he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. So these same internets are being declared for what? To push the word of the Lord. Our people waking up, such as these lessons, these videos, all this truth that's flowing through these uh, these airwaves. This is what this is showing you. So it's backfiring on them. They never thought in the last days these uh, uh, airwaves and internets would be used to what? Awaken our people. So that's what's going on now. And they can't stop it, see? Let's get a uh, quick precept on that. Let's get, uh, I think it's Job 20, 27. The heavens shall reveal his iniquity and the earth shall rise up against him. See that? And the heavens is also going into the prophets. OK, so the, the, the teachers, the leaders, the prophets, OK, through these Internets are what revealing his wickedness. OK, let me read that again. The heavens shall reveal his iniquity and the earth shall rise up against him. All right. Let me grab this. Uh, this is uh, we call the Internet scripture. I think it's Psalms 19. Yeah. The heavens, let me highlight this. The heavens declare the glory of Yahweh, and the firmament show his handiwork. Day unto day utter his speech, and night unto night show it knowledge. Verse 3. 
There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Verse four, the line is gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them had he set a tabernacle for the sun. Okay, so how are these words of truth going out through all the earth? It said a line is going out through all the earth and the words through the end of the world. How is that possible? That's what? That's via internet. So this is what we were saying. See, Esau never banked on, he, ne he never thought that the Lord would flip it to where, okay, the same uh, uh, devices and snares that he used to sit up to uh, uh, catch Israel, just like the Bible say, what the, the wicked are taking in their own devices. See, that Lord has is, is flipped it now and used this same internet, what, to trap him up, to wake up, what, our people in the last days. See that? Uh, also, uh, let me get Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 9. Because through these airwaves of this internet, what's happening? Okay, we, you got the elect or the righteous, that's what? Making the decrees of the Lord and what? Bringing inquisition against the wicked. As we just read in 2 Thessalonians uh, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, that day can't come, so what? That man is sin is, is, is revealed. How is he being revealed? What? Through the mouth of the prophets breaking down these scriptures. All right, let me get that wisdom of Solomon 1 and 9. For inquisition shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly. See that? And the sound of his word shall come unto the Lord for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. So every time a lesson go up, every time the truth of the Bible is being prophesied or preached, every time brothers hit the streets and teaching the Bible the right way, that's what? That's inquisitions being made against the wicked. Okay? It's just like in the court of law. Okay, you got you sit before what like a trial and a jury. Okay, the what the Lord is the judge. Okay, and uh, the prophets are what those like the ones bringing the indictments, bringing the charges, declaring what, repeating the word, the words of the Lord. Okay, in the open and what the angels are taking that what back to the ears of the heavenly Father. So what now the judge has to bring forth the ruling. See, this is how we know we at the end. See, the truth is being declared. Okay, it's another precept, I think, in Matthew 24. So, well, this gospel of the kingdom is preached to the end of the earth. Then the end shall come, roughly paraphrased. Okay, so that's how we know we at the end now. Okay, the, the, the end of the testimony. Okay, the, the word is being declared. The Lord is putting everybody in a lot. That man of sin is being revealed. As we saw in the video, the whole world starting to rise up. To, hey, these people are the problem. Every lie, everything we ever been taught by this damn man is a lie. See, that's the spirit of the Lord that's waking in the countries, even the people. OK, his whole system from education to finances to a uh, uh, family to a uh, career. Everybody's starting to question everything now. Why do we do things this way? Well, this don't make sense. It should be this way. So that spell. OK, Esau's spell is, is wearing off of the people now. And this is what the Lord said that would happen in the last days. His sorcery, his witchcraft, through his media, his lies, his education system, none of that is working no more. That's the Lord breaking that spell. Okay, let me get a quick precept on that. Uh, what is that? Isaiah uh, 7 and 25, 25 and 7. Let me see. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. What's been that covering cast that the Lord has said he's going to destroy? That's that lie. See, his lies, is, it's almost been like a veil or a covering cast over the whole world up until the end. So now this is why the world is, quest everybody's waking up, specifically who the Lord is waking up and questioning everything. Going against this man, well, we actually starting to read and follow the Bible now. OK, on every level, that's that covering cast, that veil being lifted off the, the eyes of the people. See, also, uh, let me get uh, what is that? Uh, Isaiah 47 and 12. Stand now with thy enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries while thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be, thou shalt be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. 
Let now the astrologers and the stargazers and the monthly procrastinators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come up on thee. So this is the Lord uh, uh, basically calling out Babylon. OK, calling out the, the, the sorcery when they say, uh, let your enchantment, your sorcery, all these things like we just said. OK, through the uh, white man's media, his education system. OK, uh, uh, even in theology. OK, religion, white Jesus, plantation Christianity, the lies ain't working no more. That's the Lord uh, tearing that sorcery down. See, everybody, this is why people are waking up and questioning everything now. See, this is what the Lord uh, meant when he uh, let me get this. That's uh, Joel 2.27. Uh, let me see. One moment. Let me get the one in Acts. Acts 2, 17. That's what I want. Okay. And it shall come to pass that in the last days, said the Most High, I will pour up my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out my spirit I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. So this is why the world, everybody's starting to wake up and question things. OK, when you say I pour out my spirit upon all flesh, you got uh, everybody, people who the Lord ain't fully even woke up yet. OK, believe it or not, people still in the world who the Lord is even starting to give certain uh, dreams and visions to. OK, and starting to just go against the status quo. Break out that 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 box, that veil that we read that's been placed over the eyes of the nations. See, everybody is waking up. And in the process of this awakening, what that man is seeing. OK, Esau Edom is on his back heels now. See, he's being he's being exposed. He's being revealed. OK, and the, at the Lord's coming, he's going to take him completely down. All right. Um, let me see where else I want to go. Let me get Deuteronomy 33 and 29. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the word of thy ecstasy. And thy enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt trend upon their high places. You see that? Thy enemies shall be found liars unto thee. So this is what's happening. The Lord pouring out his spirit upon all flesh and what the truth is out now. So the enemies are being found liars, lies about everything. OK, everything that the, uh, they've taught the world, pushed up on the world. Right. The Lord is tearing down that veil now. So we are seeing it for what it really is. OK. Uh, let me go ahead and grab this one. Job uh, 18 and 18. I'm going to start at 14 for his confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle and it shall bring him to the king of terrors. It shall dwell in his tabernacle because it is none. Let me read 15 again. It shall dwell in his tabernacle because it is none of his brimstone shall be scattered up on his habitation. And that brimstone is going to come by way of what? thermonuclear ballistic missiles, okay? When this war reaches peak, okay, the Lord is going to turn, turn missiles on themselves. And what? At the Lord's coming through the chariots, the angels and those chariots, they're going to really finish it off, okay? Verse 16, his roots shall be dried up beneath, and above shall his branch be cut off. His remembrance shall perish from the earth, and he shall have no name in the street. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. 
He shall neither have son or nephew among his people, nor any remaining of his dwelling. So this is talking about the uh, future of Esau. The Lord is going to completely root out his tabernacle. That should be neither son or nephew. OK, that means everybody in the future. OK, the Lord is going to utterly destroy the nation of Edom. That's biblical prophecy. OK, so let me get a quick precept just to prove that. OK, that, that, that's his future prophecy. That's how we know that the world is so ignorant when they talk about saving Esau or Esau could get salvation. See, the two thirds or well, a lot of times I think they think, OK, when we say Esau, you're just talking about the, uh, the co-worker, the dude that's sitting in the next cubicle to or the white dude, you know, that uh, live down the street from him. No, the, 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 the head, of, the top, top Edomite, they don't know what the hell going on no more than the average two thirds. OK, they don't run nothing to rule the world. OK, they show sure wouldn't be working with you or sitting right next to you. Or they rule the world. But when we really, really talk about uh, Esau. These are the top elites. OK, your Bill Gates, your Rockefellers, Bilderbergers, a lot of the small hats that's over there in that land portraying to be you. Then really make your uh, foreign policies and your gas prices. And th those are the ones, Job 924. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Those are the people in the power seat right now that the Lord say he's coming back, what, to take them down and what, put Israel in that position. So uh, there's a quick precept to what we just read about the Lord uh, uprooting, uh, cutting off uh, son and nephew. This is uh, Obadiah 1 and 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahushah has spoken it. Okay, so that's Esau's future judgment. This is why the Lord coming back to take him down, put him in slavery for a thousand years, and at the end of that thousand years, okay, they're gonna be completely done away with okay that's so that that's biblical prophecy we read okay and we're showing you why through uh, uh that man of sin being revealed okay all these different things that the world is starting to wake up to the uh, these world crimes that's been uh going for years okay decades upon decades who all trace back is finally coming out to these same group of people okay that's why the lord is going to do what he do all right um let me close out with one last video. I think I had one more in here. One moment. Who doesn't like a little marshmallow? Yeah, know what? I ain't gonna even worry about the last video because I'm having problems with this TikTok. So I ain't gonna even worry about that last video. But uh, before I go, let me see. Uh, that anything else I want to pull? Uh, mm, I tell you what, let me. Uh, I'm gonna grab this last one and we get up out of here. This is Joe 15. And uh, five, just to show you, like the videos we showed early, okay, the Lord, part of the Lord taking this man down or exposing him is coming through the way of his own people. 
Okay, like we said earlier, these United Nations, that the more divided than ever. What the Lord said in scriptures, a house divided can't stand. See, a nation divided against itself can't stand. See, so there is a lots of infighting amongst the nation of Esau right now on many different levels. OK, so they're weaker than they've ever been. Okay, also, what you have their own people that's starting to speak against them, all these whistleblowers that's coming out, people with these inside secrets and things of that nature. Or like the video we shared or uh, showed earlier, this guy was like a, a, a top position in the uh, military, an army representative. So. You got their own people that starting to expose, or that they, 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 as the scriptures say, we about to read their own tongue is falling upon themselves. Okay, so this is uh, Job fifteen and five. For the mouth uttereth iniquity, and thou choosest the tongue of the crafty. Thy own mouth condemneth thee. See that, and not I yea, thy own lips testify against thee. So their own mouth condemned thee and their own lips testify against thee. This is even their own people starting to turn on one another and expose one another. All right. Um, let me get Job 18 and 7. The steps, the steps of his strength shall be straightened and his own counsel shall cast him down. See, and this is what's happening. Let me read verse eight. For he is cast into a net by his own feet and he walketh up on a snare. OK, so that the snare, a lot of the traps that he set, like, even like I said earlier concerning the Internet, this Internet was originally intended to just keep people trapped and uh, distracted, just like in a net caught in the Matrix. But what the law, his own device, what is it, backfiring on him? Okay, the Lord is using these airways for what truth coming out in the last days. All right. So uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up with that. OK, that's just showing you what that man is seeing is finally being exposed or revealed. OK, that's a prophecy that has to happen before the Lord can return in the end. OK, that man of sin has to be revealed as son of perdition. So this is what the whole world is starting to witness and see together. OK, that, that man of sin, Esau, Edom. Is at his end. He's being revealed. Inquisition is being made and brought before the Lord through these scriptures. So next, what the plan of the Lord is about to move. OK, so once again, that's been that man of sin revealed. I pray that this lesson was edifying. Until next time, we're going to say Shalom. We are.